Roberta asked me to teach her how to lose weight, be fitter, be healthier. So I did. And I'm gonna teach you how to do the same thing. And it all starts right now. Hey, I'm nearly 50, did you know that? But I don't look it and I don't feel it. Let me share my tips and tricks with you. Okay, like I said before, I'm that close to being 50 years old. But all the time, people take me for being a younger man. I've heard people say I look like him in my 30s. I heard one guy say, I look like I'm 29. I think that guy's blind. But whatever, as a 50 year old, I'll take it. You know, I've heard some people say, oh, it's your genes. You've got good genes, you've got good DNA. You were born that way, it's your destiny. You know what I say to that? Sit down and think about this for a sec. Nobody knows what's gonna happen to them in the future. Even doctors don't know if you're gonna get cancer or heart disease or a stroke or any of that stuff. Everybody is just taking their best guess. The best any doctor or scientist could ever tell you is that these are the chances that this is gonna happen to you. We have studies that support the idea that this is probable. That's all. So what does that mean for you and me? I'll tell you what that means. It means that every single one of us is taking his best guess. That's it. Your best guess. Mom, Dad, am I gonna get old and weak and fat and have wrinkles? Nobody knows. It's your best guess. The decision is up to you how you wanna play things in your life. Now, in my case, when I was about 28, I decided, all right, I can decide that I am cursed and I'm going to have heart disease or a stroke or be fat and weak and all those old dude things. If you think like this, yeah, you increase the chances that all that bad stuff is gonna happen to you. Or you could say to yourself, hmm, I don't know the future. I'm gonna roll the dice and I'm gonna gamble that I'm normal. Not fantastic, not cursed, but just plain Jane normal. Okay, so what does that mean? If you're normal, that means that the decisions you make every single day about your lifestyle are going to influence the results that you get later on down the road. It means that if you decide to eat right and exercise and do all those things that mom and dad and your doctor told you to do, yeah, you are gonna get old gracefully. You're gonna hang on to your youth longer than other people. You're gonna be fitter. You're gonna be happier. You're gonna have more strength. You're gonna look good. And your brain's gonna function better. You know, when I was 29, people said to me, oh, you're turning 30 next year. That's when you'll start to notice that stuff slows down. You're gonna have more aches and pains. You're gonna not be as strong. You're gonna have more wrinkles, blah, blah, blah. You know what? 30 came and went. I was still the same guy. Then people said that, oh, when you turn 35. Nope. Oh, when you turn 40. Nope. Oh, 45. And they just kept pushing up the number for all these years. And like I said, here we are on 50's doorstep and I still feel like I'm 25. No joke. That's the truth. Hey, so today I'm gonna show you my anti-aging breakfast that I actually eat. One note though, you know, I've got all my products here that I assemble the breakfast from. You'll see various brand names. Let me tell you, I don't take money from anybody. Nobody sponsors my video. Nobody has ever paid me a single cent to say anything nice about the product. If you see me using a particular brand, it's because that's what was on the shelf the day I went shopping. You also know that if I use a particular brand and I say something nice about it, it's my true opinion. I'm not getting paid to say that. You know, over the years, people have come to me because they've noticed, oh, I can't believe that you're so old, but you don't look it. Tell me what you do. People have been willing to pay me money for this. I'm not that kind of guy. I don't want your money. I just want to educate you. Okay, so why have we been told that breakfast is the most important meal of the day? Let me ask you this. Have you ever heard people saying things like, oh, I'm on a diet. I'm trying to lose weight. That's why I'm skipping breakfast. I got bad news for you. That's about the least intelligent thing you could choose to do. The reason? Starvation mode. Let's say this cucumber represents all of human history. Do you know how much of this cucumber 
represents what our ancestors had to deal with in terms of struggling with starvation. Let me show you. There. That represents all the time that we human beings have been able to eat whatever we want. And the rest of the time, we have always dealt with starvation. So what this means is that your body is evolved to conserve calories as much as possible. Your body's always afraid that you're gonna starve to death. So what do you think it does if it has excess calories? It's gonna put them away. It's gonna make you fat on purpose. Because look, that's what we're evolved for. Now, it's also no secret that when you're asleep, your metabolism gets turned way down. Your body goes into starvation mode, essentially. It's trying to save all the calories it can to preserve you, to make sure that you don't die. Your body does not know that there's no food shortage. So if you wake up in the morning and you have low metabolism and you don't eat, your body's gonna stay in starvation mode and it's gonna try to keep you fat. Ask around. I'm sure you've heard people say, oh, I eat hardly anything and yet I still get fat. Or I eat hardly anything and I'm not losing weight. <laughs> That's why. So, one of the reasons that you should eat breakfast is because it provides the calories to kickstart your metabolism. It sends a message to your body saying, hey look, we don't have a food shortage. Hey look, we got all this food. We can burn off some calories. Gets the machine going. And plus, if you eat a good, solid, healthy breakfast every single day, it means that you're gonna be satisfied longer. And if you're satisfied longer, you're not gonna eat excessively throughout the day, which in the long run is gonna keep you thinner and fitter. All right, first off, high fiber cereal. And like you know, I hate measuring anything. So I just use a fist. When people talk about one serving, does anyone ever really know what that means? I mean, there are various meanings for it, like you know, right? Well, the easiest way to think about it is, or at least the way I go through life, is when someone says, one serving, I picture my fist. I go, okay, that's about the size of my fist. One serving of meat is a piece of steak the size of my fist. One serving of fruits is an apple the size of my fist. If you go through life thinking this way, it'll just streamline everything. You'll never have to worry about calculations and measurements. And like I said, the proof is in the pudding. It actually works. Okay, why do you need high fiber cereal? Everybody knows that fiber moves poop through your system faster, right? And I don't need to explain why that's a good thing. Poop is toxic for you. Of course your body wants to get rid of it. But a lot of people don't know that fiber also keeps your blood sugar stable. And unstable blood sugar is a source of all kinds of things going wrong with you. I'll make a future video about how blood sugar influences the way you age, but today just let's run with the idea that, yeah, we don't get enough fiber in our diet, and this is one way to kind of give ourselves that morning boost of fiber. A handful. Next, cereal oat O's. You guys all know what this stuff is. I'm not gonna mention the brand because nobody pays me, right? Studies have indicated that the oat that goes into making cereal oat O's gives you some marginal protection against heart disease. Yeah, and there's fiber in it too. A handful. Walnuts. Now why are walnuts important? Walnuts contain something called ALA, a type of omega-3 precursor. And when you eat it, you, the inside of your body can turn it into omega-3s. And you've probably heard all kinds of good things about omega-3 oils, right? But most omega-3s come from the ocean when you eat certain fish like salmon and tuna. Aside from that, walnuts have monounsaturated fat, which is good for your heart, your, your skin, and your hair and it's got protein. It's a superfood. It's got a lot of good things in it. A handful. You're seeing a pattern, right? It's always a handful. Pumpkin seeds. They have protein. They have monounsaturated fats. They have antioxidants to protect you from things like cancer and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you were born with a prostate gland, data also shows that this stuff has some marginal protection against prostate cancer. Now, if you're in one of the risk groups, this is your friend. Prunes. We all know that prunes make you poop. That's not the reason I'm asking you to put this in, but it's helpful. Now, what a lot of people don't know about prunes is that it is one of those foods with one of the highest ORAC ratings in the world. 
ORAC is O-R-A-C. What that means is that it protects you from oxidative damage. Too much oxidative damage will cause you to age too fast. I only use two of them, not a handful. Too many of these create explosive problems. Almonds. Almonds are important because they are Mother Nature's highest source of vitamin E. Some of you might have seen people talking about vitamin E uh, being taken as a supplement. <sighs> The science is saying that that's probably not a good idea. That supplemental vitamin E taken as a pill can have a chance of causing more problems than it actually solves. So my advice to you, and the advice I follow myself, is natural sources of vitamin E only. And there's nothing better than almonds that I know of. Like all nuts, good for your heart, lots of monounsaturated fats, lots of protein, lots of fiber, all those things that help you stay young. Do you need to use nut butter? No. If you like whole almonds, or if you like powdered almonds, or slivered almonds, I don't care. Just make sure that what you're using is 100% almonds. Don't accept any product that is mixed with other things. There's nothing but almonds in this jar, so we're all good. About that much. Peanut butter. Same deal as with the almonds. All the things that you say that are good about nuts, you can say about peanuts. Now, why do I go to the trouble of having another nut variety in here? Peanuts have a chemical naturally occurring, of course, called resveratrol. Now, resveratrol is also found in red wine, and it is said to be an agent in slowing down aging. In fact, I think, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, um, one of the Chinese nicknames for peanuts is long life nut. And again, just like with the almond butter, do not accept any product that has other things mixed in with it. Especially peanut butter, you can get all kinds of weirdness going on with like trans fat, sugar, all that kind of stuff that's not peanuts. Always make sure you get something that's 100% peanuts. Cinnamon. The thing about cinnamon, aside from it just tasting nice, is that it has a slight blunting effect on blood sugar. And like I've kind of hinted at before, having your blood sugar spike can contribute to you looking and feeling older than you ought to. I just do one shake. Don't overdo the cinnamon. It can be really hard on your liver. One shake is just fine. There's nothing unsafe about this. I shake my head whenever I see those guys doing the cinnamon challenge. It's, it's not a good idea. Green tea powder. Here's something maybe you didn't know about tea. All tea, English, tea, Chinese oolong tea, Japanese green tea, it's all the same species. They're just different strains and different processes. When you're dealing with a green tea like this, the little buds are steamed and then they're made into powder. That's why they retain their green color. But what does green tea have that makes it so good? Why do I put it in my breakfast? It's got something called ECGC, which is a naturally occurring chemical that revs up your nervous system. It actually helps you burn off calories. It helps you think faster, keeps the whole machine younger for longer. And you've probably heard this already before, but green tea is incredibly high in antioxidants. And like always, I gotta tell you, don't overdo the tea. Don't overdo anything, but the tea, we already know. There was a woman in India who would have, now she went overboard, but she would have the equivalent of 100 tea bags worth of tea every single day. And when you take in that much tea on a regular basis, yeah, it can hollow out your bones. That's what happened to that lady. So, just, you know, a little bit. But that much is enough. There you go. Okay. Whey powder. Again, like I said, I'm not partial to this brand. What I do look for, though, is the avoidance of artificial sweeteners. What I do like about this is, here we go, this is naturally sweetened. I think you can read that. This is sweetened with stevia so we get to avoid the sugar stevia is a leaf and as far as i've read there are no negative health consequences of consuming it in a reasonable amount obviously science changes all the time but as far as i know there's no problem at this moment with taking something that is sweetened with stevia the other thing that i like is let's see if you can make this out it says right there it's grass-fed now grass-fed cattle has several advantages one of which being the meat is higher in omega-3s than regular cattle. Now when you're dealing with the milk, which this is made of, you're dealing with higher levels of CLA, which is a beneficial fat. They say that CLA is another one of those things that can contribute to the slowdown of aging. You know, you obviously need protein throughout the day. 
If you are working out the way you should be working out, and believe me, somebody of my age definitely needs to work out. You are gonna get fat, you are gonna get old if you don't work out the way you should. That's the bad news. The good news, in my experience, working out's about 30% of the challenge. The other 70% is food. I prefer it that way. I prefer not having to work my butt off. But maybe that's just me. But anyway, if you are working your muscles, you need protein to build them back up. They also say that things like whey powder boost your immune system. They make you feel full longer. So if this goes into the breakfast, yeah, I am less likely to want a snack later on in the morning. This is gonna help really thrust me to lunch. You know, it's all about keeping satisfied for as long as possible without eating too much. One scoop. Next up, yogurt. Okay, so if the question is, what is yogurt good for? Why can't I just drink milk? Well, yogurt, like I've said before, is, um, how do I put this delicately? It's bacteria poop. I know that sounds totally horrible, but you know, I'll make a future video about specifically why that's a good thing, but the kind of bacteria that is responsible for making things like yogurt and cheese and all these kind of things, they're actually good for the human body. And I'm sure I am not nearly the first guy to talk about the benefits of things like probiotics, right? Probiotics is a really nice way to say good germs in your guts, okay? And yeah, that's full of it. Now there are a lot of people who are studying this stuff who say that having the right kind of bacteria in your guts affects everything from your overall health level to even your mood. So yeah, it is in your best interest to eat things that have good bacteria in them. Plus protein, calcium, all that kind of good stuff. And it also adds some nice mouthfeel. Next up, berries. You don't have to get this brand or this blend of berries. For myself, I usually just get a generic bag of blueberries. But on the shelf, they had blueberries and blackberries and raspberries, and I thought, excellent. This is gonna give me a variety of antioxidants. Now you might be wondering, okay, what is an antioxidant? Why is it important? Cells age due to various different reasons. One, obviously, is time. Nobody's arguing that you can reverse time. I'm not a fool, you're not a fool. But there are a number of other reasons that cells start to get old. And one of those big reasons is oxidative damage. If you smoke, that'll happen. If you're out in the UV sunshine, that will happen. Life processes, the action of being alive, processing oxygen and food and water, this will all cause cell damage actually. That kind of damage, you can make a dent in it. There's something you can do about it. Now plants have figured out natural defenses. If you've ever wondered why tea is green, or prunes are that color, or these berries are that color, or tomatoes are red, these are all the plant's natural defenses against UV. So when you eat these things, your body gets to benefit from those weapons that the plant has created to protect itself. Now you may or may not know this, but things like grapes and berries are all of the plant matter that we've been talking about until now, the green tea included. They all have antioxidants and you can tell from the color, but here's something that nobody seems to know. The higher in elevation the plant grows, let's say things that are on the tops of mountains, like grapes that grow around Chile or Argentina or someplace like that. They've done studies on the wine that comes from those grapes and yeah, they're much higher in antioxidants. Now, if my memory is correct, I think that either Chilean wine or Argentinian wine has the highest antioxidant count of any wine. This is because those grapes are in the direct UV much more than other grapes and they've built natural defenses because of that. And when we take it into our bodies, like I said, it's gonna protect us too. One of the keys to preventing premature aging is getting enough antioxidants. The idea here is to get as many different colors from as many different plants as you possibly can because every different kind of plant will create a slightly different kind of weapon against a particular kind of damage. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Milk, of course you need milk, it's cereal. There's basically my anti-aging and or weight loss breakfast. Okay, now all I'm gonna do is mix it up and eat it. And you know, is it delicious? Oh, heck yeah. Is it safe to eat every day? 
well, from my own experience, I have, geez, do I eat it every day now? No, I eat it a lot of days, but I like variety, variety's good. But there was a stretch there where I ate the same breakfast every day for four years straight. So do I recommend that you do that? No, you, I don't, but you can. I have had no health damage from doing that. I'm just saying it's possible. Now, what is great about a breakfast like this is that it will keep you satisfied. Well, I find if I eat this at, say, 7 a.m., I won't get hungry until, oh, geez, 11? It keeps me satisfied. It's got all those, you know, protein and fiber and vitamins and all that kind of thing that you need to really not get hungry. And duh, if you're not hungry, you're not going to eat potato chips and candy and all that kind of other stuff that not only makes you fat, but wrecks your skin. I'll do another video in the future that talks about how sugar actually wrecks your skin and makes you have premature wrinkles. But like I said, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss videos like that. But anyway, getting back to this, if you eat something like this, you tell your body, hey look, we've got plenty of food, we're not starving, there's no food shortage, we don't need to go into starvation mode. And yet your internal furnace is gonna burn those calories better than if you skipped breakfast. And here's a horrible thing that nobody seems to talk about. If you skip breakfast, thinking you're gonna lose weight especially. Oh, what a misguided concept. But anyway, if you skip breakfast, the next time you eat something, I'll tell you what happens inside your body. Inside your body, it's gonna go, oh hey, we got food. Food is rare. We have to take all these calories and hoard them. This is one of the reasons people get fat, even though they don't eat very much, because they're teaching their body that it should be in starvation mode most of the time, which is exactly the opposite of what you want. You want your body to be burning calories all the time. But if you continually tell the body, we are never getting food, I'm skipping breakfast today. Yeah, that's bad news. It's always gonna be sticking it to your butt or your gut. You're working against yourself, don't do that. Have a good, nutritious breakfast. Okay. You can tell with the yogurt and the milk and the frozen berries, this is becoming almost like ice cream. Think about that. How nice would it be to have ice cream every morning for breakfast? All right. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Is it good? Oh, yeah. And you're probably wondering what I like to drink with my breakfast. Well, this is powdered green tea and it's already in the cereal I ate, so I don't wanna drink that. But I do like to drink green tea with the breakfast because of all the antioxidants and everything, so. Bam! And uh, to viewer NSTK who sent me that nice message this morning, this one's for you. Thank you very much for what you said. Even though this is the wellness and anti-aging playlist, I figured I'd shove some Japanese culture in there too. Um, seeing as we're talking about Aichi Ken and we are talking about green tea. If you talk about these two things, you're also talking about a dessert called Yokan or Wido. Geez, I wish I had some. Bam! Okay, so this is the thing I'm talking about. Um, if you, you don't know Japanese food very well, this will be new for you. Um, like I said, the proper name of this is Yokan. This is from Nagoya, or very close to Nagoya. It's Aichiken. Basically, it's a type of pasty cake. I mean, I like them. I like them a lot. Ta-da! Okay, so the thing about Japanese culture is that when you drink something that's not sweetened, maybe even bitter, like a green tea, it is traditional to have it with something like Yokan because the sweetness of this will mesh very well with this. And yeah, I know it's not health food, but a lot of you guys are tuning into my show because you want to find out more about Japan. Bam! Cheers, everybody. Mmm, that tastes like Japan. Now let's have it with some yokan. There you go with your good look at it. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that brings back memories. I feel like I'm there again. I hope you liked what you saw. So remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. More content on the way. Yeah, those who watched my California roll video probably remember me cutting up some green onions and saving the roots. These are all grown from roots that I cut off. I ate the tops and I just stuck the roots into the, into the soil. And here you go, they've all grown up 
to be big and whenever I want green onions, I just snip the tops off, chop them up and eat them. And they just keep giving me free food. 